Esau McGraw, Louis Katz, Spanky Hayes, Tony Schofield, and Willie Barcina. Now, please welcome Cedric the Entertainer. What's up, y'all? Feeling good tonight. How's everybody doing tonight, man? Y'all blowing it up, boy. Everybody coming out to ATL now. Nah, it's the hot city, boy. Got, y'all got Ursha. <laughs> Ursha. Ursha got too many hit songs, boy. He, he can't miss. I think he on steroids. Y'all think Ursha on steroids? <laughs> y'all got them yin yang twins? That's hot right there. I like them. You know, that's the thing about rap music. See, that people think rap ain't for grown folk, but we kind of like it, except for it's, it's two versions. You got the Walmart version, which grown folk like. <laughs> then you got the kind your nephew got in his car. <laughs> like that little whisper song when it came out. I thought that was, you know, I thought that was a hot little song. You know, I, I thought it was nice. Hey, girl. How you doing? I was like, I like that. Like that. Then I'm in the car with my nephew and heard the real one. Wait to see my dick. Like, <laughs> hey, you know they said that. <laughs> you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't supposed to talk about your thing, Elaine. You know? <laughs> too much. They just making records down here too. Y'all got they, they don't even they don't even they laugh it taffy. I got that laugh it taffy. <laughs> Just make it up whatever on TV. I, was, I went to the candy store and made up a song. Chico Stick, yeah. <laughs> oh, y'all got the other people too. Y'all got the top number one reality show in the world. Yeah. It's on. I love it. <laughs> Be and Bobby Brown. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> Hell to the top. What, the, what does that mean? Hell to the top. Got everybody saying this shit. Hell to the now. <laughs> That's all right right there. Bobby Brown and Whitney, man, I tell you. That is a book report waiting to happen right there. That <laughs> Turn that in on the effects of drugs in the family. <laughs> cool, man. We're going to have a good time tonight. I'm glad y'all out here. What we're doing is bringing and introducing y'all to some of the hottest young comedians in the country. It is a good time here. Y'all are great audience. We want y'all to keep that energy level up for these cats. Make sure they have a good time on the stage and uh, show them some love, y'all. So I'm going to bring this first cat to the stage. Now, y'all may know him as one of the breakout performers on the Dave Chappelle show. He did two of my favorite characters, uh, Ashley Larry and Beautiful the Pimp. Y'all put y'all hands together and show some love for Darnell Rollins, y'all. What's up, ATL? I like this audience. Y'all got nice teeth. I love an audience with nice teeth. You got nice teeth, you happy, you laugh for no reason. Ha-ha! You ever see how somebody laugh, they got an ugly mouth, it's different. They like, ha -ha! Welcome to the Waffle House! Brothers are the hardest people to make laugh. When you're a brother, you gotta have two different laughs. You gotta have your tough laugh with your buddies. You gotta laugh hard. Cause you don't want nobody to think you gay. <laughs> you might even punch a man in the face. Ha ha! Pow! What up, dog? That's your tough laugh. You ever see a, girl, a guy get a sexy laugh? A nice girl walk past with some nice breasts, you get your cute laugh. You laugh like this. Ha ha! You start rubbing your nipples for no reason. You're like, ha I can't wait to blow up, man. Everybody always tell, ask me, when you blow up, you gonna go Hollywood? You damn right. I can't wait to go Hollywood. You think I did entertainment to go Brooklyn? I never heard no superstar. Jamie Foxx just won an Oscar and moved back to South Central. I'm leaving the hood. I'm, I ain't keeping it real. I'm, I'm selling out. Selling out is shit. Every time you hear about somebody selling out, it's nice. 
What happened to Tony? Oh, he sold out and moved to Beverly Hills and bought a mansion for 5.5 million. He tripping, son. <laughs> Every time you hear about somebody keeping it real, what happened to Mike? Oh, he kept it real and stabs him by the neck. He doing 20 to life. <laughs> I'm selling out, man. I'm here right now trying to remember where I came from. <laughs> Y'all know how I feel. I was one of the hottest shows in the last 10 years. I was showing up. I was using three credit cards a day. I'm running around everywhere. I'm rich, bitch. Rah! I'm buying champagne. Yo, drink up, son. Dave took up. I'm like, I need a receipt for all this shit. <laughs> Every day, everybody, where's Dave? What happened to Dave? Where's Dave? I don't know where Dave is. All I know, he told me he was going home. I ain't know the nigga meant home, home back to Africa. That's a long way for a pack of Newports, man. Everybody gets stressed up. Everybody can't afford to go to Africa. I was stressed out last week. I looked, I went online, right? Trying to see how much it cost to go to Africa, how long it took. I was like, forget that. I'm just going to East Point, man. I don't want to keep it real like that. I'm looking for a new girl, man. Women don't like me. They say I'm short, man. Women like talk. Guys, a girl see a tall guy, they will follow him out in the parking lot. He asks the dumb questions. I'm, excuse me, how tall are you? Six nine. Mmm. Well, what size shoe you wear? Nineteen and a half. Mm. Well, let me see how big your hands are. Ah! See, short people can't say that. This girl asked me the other day. She said, Donella, what size shoe you wear? I said an eight. <laughs> she said, ugh. I said, but I got a curve in my boot. <laughs> That's for all the freaks in here, man. Right. It's got a hook. Black people, we got to give some unity, man. We got to start showing love for each other. Every other race look out for each other. Italians looking for Italians. Irish look out for Irish, Jews look out for Jews. Black people, we look out for the cops. <laughs> Tell them we gotta get some unity, man. Laugh, have a good time, man. Brothers, we do the joke hate. You ever do, go to a comedy show, somebody joke hate? This is joke hate, you tell a funny joke, they do like this. <laughs> like, it was I, it was I. White boys, you go to a white comedy club, soon as they introduce you. Coming to the stage, you see them on Chappelle show, they <laughs> rock out! Yeah! White boys start beating themselves up. Rock out! I totally like your show. I so like it. That's when, when white people talk, that's what makes their words intense. When they put so in front of anything, they make it more intense. Like, you can be fired from your job, you're not really fired until you so fired. Bob, you've been coming to work every day late for the last 20 years. You're fired. Screw you, I got a nice resume. Whatever. No, you are so fired. <laughs> a lot of black comics make fun of how white guys talk. Black people, don't front. We got the white voice too. And we only use when we at work. Yeah. You ever call somebody at work, they don't know it's you, they answer the phone. Johnson, Smickle, and Reimheimer. You're like, what you say? Oh, nah, they got me twisted, son. We about to go murder these niggas at lunch, son. Where the weed at? I'm down there at Rollins. I need a job. Dave, come back. I'm broke, bitch. Peace. Gonna keep things moving right here. Well, this next brother has often been compared to such power, star power as Pryor, Carlin, Cosby. I mean, the next brother has been called a comic genius by his mama. His mama would say that often. <laughs> y'all show some love. Please give it up for David Arnold. Let him hear it, y'all. Subject to entertainer, y'all show him some love. What up, ATL? How y'all doing? I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. Me and my wife just celebrated a new baby. Just had a new baby girl. 
You know, yeah, everybody always, everybody always clap for the baby. But we in that six week hold period. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Six weeks, no sex. You know what I mean? I'll be trying to find an angle to get to the ass, but I can't because she got a doctor's note. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want to have sex with your man, that's the ultimate excuse to have a doctor's note. She be quick to pull it out here and say, right here, six weeks, no sex. Right there, look at that, right there. I got mad, I went to the doctor. I'm like, you know what, you're messing up my life. Let me get a note too, let me get a note. Give me a note for some head, let me get a note for some head. <laughs> we in the bed one night, she pulled out her note, I pulled out mine, pow, I got a note too! <laughs> read the directions two to three times a day as needed for stress, read that, read that. All I'm saying is respect my note. But she think the six weeks mean everything. You know what I mean? She don't want to cook, she don't want to clean. I'm like, you got to cook something, but I can't say cook. Because if I say cook, she'll start crying. Because they sensitive, you know, they hormones. So I got to find a way to trick this woman into making me something to eat without using the word cook. So I'm playing taboo with my wife to get fed. I'm like, maybe you might go in this room over here where there's some hot stuff and some cold stuff. And maybe after you've been in there a while, the stuff that's cold won't be so cold no more. Maybe you'll come out with something hot that won't be as not full as I am right now. Let me cook. She a great mother though, gotta give it to her. She a great woman, y'all take to the maternity thing, bam, like that. Even though she did let the baby fall off the couch a few weeks ago. <laughs> now, how a four week old baby fall off the couch, I don't know. Cause four weeks you ain't doing nothing. You ain't moving, you ain't, you know, she's just sitting there. And I'm like, my poor little daughter probably just sitting there watching whatever happened to her happen. She can't brace herself, she can't do nothing. She's just sitting there like, this is what it's gonna be, huh? This just, this just what the hell I'm gonna have to deal with, huh? You know what, get my daddy on the phone. Get my daddy on the phone. I need a note from the doctor. I don't want him to leave me with you no more. I come home, my wife, she holding the baby crying. I'm like, what happened to get the head out of the couch? Like, how the hell the baby fall off the couch? I was in the kitchen. What the hell are you doing in the kitchen? You ain't cooking while you in the kitchen. <laughs> but we got that little control thing in our house. You know what I'm saying? My wife worked too. She make money. Anybody, where the women that make money at? Let me see the women that make money. Ain't nothing like being with a woman who make money because she thinks she can tell me what to do. She wants to give me chores or stuff to do. She wants me to vacuum. I'm not going to vacuum. You understand? I'm not no vacuum er rur, rur. You understand? I'm working too. I bring in 18.5% of this annual household income. <laughs> Look at some of y'all doing the math like, uh, you probably need to be vacuuming, dog. You probably... Somebody yelled out, and cooking too, and cooking too. I'm not gonna be doing no cooking. But it's good, you gotta work. I just don't wanna work, you know? I ain't no one to work, forget the work. You know, I mean, I'm glad I can make people laugh because you can't keep no job, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the thing about working every day is that they want you to work every day. <laughs> I got a job, I was like, all right, we see you, like, we see you tomorrow. I'm like, tomorrow? We just did this today. How about I see you on Thursday? How about on Thursday? When we get paid Friday, I'll be back on Friday. I just don't like the office life. The office life is so full of, you know what I mean? The office is the only place that they make you sing happy birthday to somebody. You ever been, hey, it's Steve's birthday. We about to sing happy birthday to Steve. Like, who the hell is Steve? I don't know no Steve, right? You ever had people sing happy birthday to you that don't give a damn about you? That's the worst birthday song ever, ain't it? They get to your name, they go in 12 different directions, don't nobody really know you. All right, they're like, happy birthday to you. How was a nice day, by Dusty. What kind of cake is, man, I don't want happy birthday. They got systems in the office I don't like, stuff they believe in, like the inner office envelope. The inner office envelope is the thing that they use to put documents in it to take it from one department to the next. And they got a little dude with a cart that come by and pick up the envelopes. But the funny thing about it is it takes six weeks for an envelope to get from this cubicle to that one. And you be arguing with your coworkers. I sent it to you in their office envelope with a brother with the cart to smell like wild turkey. Get him. And they got a security system for the inner office envelope. It's a string. You put the string on it, you be like, ain't nobody never gonna get in this right here. Send that to accountant. 
And if it's some real good stuff, you do real serious. You make a figure eight, they really ain't gonna know. Right there, that's what I'm talking about. Look, I can tell all the people who ain't got no inner office envelopes at their job. Look at them. They're like, we ain't got no inner office envelopes at our establishment. It's a good thing, you know, man. I'm just at that age, you know, I'm at that age where I'm like, you know, I like live etiquette and everything. I'm the oldest. I got three younger sisters, right? One of my sisters is deaf. I don't know anybody else got a handicap. You clapping for the deafness? Uh, the thing about my sister being deaf is, I mean, it's my responsibility and being the example to make fun of her as much as I possibly can. A lot of people think that's wrong, but you got to understand something about Robin. She got selective hearing. She hear what she want to hear. Right? I'll be like, Robin, you want some ice cream? Uh-huh! You're going to help me wash these dishes, though, right? I'm like, bitch, I know you hear me. Her and her boyfriend, they get drunk and fight. He deaf, too. You ever see two deaf people cuss each other out in sign language? You got to whoop your own ass to cuss somebody out in sign language. Robin came home one day, she got a black eye. I'm concerned. I'm like, Robin, what happened? Did he hit you? She's like, no, I couldn't. I'm like, yeah. I'm you got an anger problem, Robin. You need a nap. I just don't know where I would be. You know what I mean? You know, the older you get, you realize it's etiquette in every situation you're in, right? Like, for instance, you ever been to a funeral of somebody that's so old when they die that you can't feel sorry for them? <laughs> I'm the only one, huh, right? <laughs> right, my Uncle Joe, my Uncle Joe died like about three months ago. This brother was 106. People was at the funeral crying. <laughs> Somebody yelled out, he went too soon. <laughs> I'm like, so soon? This brother should have been dead 30 years ago. I should have never met Uncle Joe, you hear me? We should have just missed each other, that's all I'm saying. Too soon, said he died of natural causes. I say he killed himself. 106, you figure shoot the Lord forgot me. I'm about to do it myself. Ain't got no friends, nobody to talk to. And he jumped to his death. 106, you ain't got to jump out the window. This nigga jumped off the bed. <laughs> Shattered into a cloud of dust. Poof. <laughs> we vacuumed up in the living room. I'm like, I get it, baby. I get it. Woo! Uncle Joe went too soon. Went too soon. I'm at that age of my life. You know what I mean? I'm at that age where I need a nap. Anybody else need a good nap in their life? <laughs> Remember when you didn't need no nap? Remember you didn't need no nap? A nap used to be a threat. My mother would use it against me. She'd be like, keep it up, your little ass gonna take a nap. Right, I'd cry, you know what I'm saying? Now if I think I'm not gonna be able to take a nap, I weep uncontrollably. Right, you ever be sitting at work in your little cubicle, it'd be hot? You think you're working, don't you? You got your hand on your keyboard. You don't realize you sleep till it be cues all across the monitor. The hell are you doing? I got road rage. Anybody else got road rage? Woo! I want to kill everybody. You know what I'm saying? You know what it is? I'm, I'm not from Cleveland. I live in L.A. It's pressure driving out here. You know the worst pressure is leading off that left turn lane in traffic. You ever been that person? You know the pressure of leading off the left turn signal in rush hour traffic? You sitting at the light, I got 12 people in my rear view mirror looking at me like if he don't turn the corner, the second this light turn green. I'm nervous, I'm looking at the light on the other side like I ain't gonna mess it up, I ain't gonna mess it up. I got this one, I got this one. Cause I've been guy number 12. You ever been guy number 12? You mad cause you ain't first anyway. And you know you got 11 irresponsible people in front of you. And anybody's hesitation gonna cost you your chance of making that light. Soon as the light turned green, I turned into a cheerleader. Go, 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 go! And you almost get there, but the person right in front of you decide to stop at the yellow light, you mother! My name's David Armit, y'all. Thanks so much. I'll holla at you.
turned the key, all I heard was
Let's bring my next dude out here. Y'all show some love for Louis Catch, y'all. What's up, Atlanta? Make some noise. Good to be here. Good to be here. I've been I've been real busy lately, doing a lot of things, doing a lot of a lot of balding, a lot of balding. I don't know if you can see that. Check that out. Yeah. Funny to you, I'm dying slowly. Hilarious. I'm not very happy about it though. I can't take care of it in any of the typical uh, bald guy ways. You know, I can't shave my head because I got a kind of kind of serious medical condition. I got what my doctor called a uh, jacked up dome. Uh, so that's not going to work. The other option, of course, would be to cover it up with a hat. I can't do that because I wear glasses. Can't wear a hat and glasses. That's a fake mustache away from being in disguise. Don't do that. Check this out. There's something that happened the other day at a comedy club. I'm sitting in the back of the club on a stool at the bar like this, trying to watch the show, and a guy comes up to me and starts standing right here, right where my thighs kind of make this V shape. Like, basically, he was standing any closer to me, he would have been standing inside me. Now, and at first, I thought maybe he was just passing through, just getting out of someone's way. Oh, no, this guy was hanging out, just kicking it with my genitalia, just standing around like he's waiting to catch the crotch bus to Sacktown. And that's not right. That's not right. A man doesn't stand in another man's V. If you're not a female, you're not allowed up in here. You don't cross the knee border without a valid pushport. You know what I'm saying? See what I'm trying to get at? And the worst part about it is the bartender already begun to question my sexuality earlier when I had revealed to him that my favorite cereal is Special K with red berries. Now, personally, I thought that was a delicious cereal. No, it turns out gay cereal, homosexual cereal. I'd never heard of that before. I tried to ask him. I said, well, what kind of cereal do you enjoy? He says, honey bunches of oats. Do you believe that? Honey bunches of oats. That means this guy gets up each day and starts his morning not only with a mouthful of nuts, but with a mouthful of nut clusters. Oh, but I'm gay. I'm the one who's gay. So my girlfriend right now is, uh, is black. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Applauding. I don't know what you're laughing at. I don't know why that's funny. But you don't believe me. It's true. No, it's true. And it's cool being in an interracial relationship. It hasn't been uh, too awkward or anything. Except for one time when I took her to get her hair done at a black beauty salon. Yeah. Now, a lot of people say that, oh, you know, white people just don't understand about black hair. You know what? Those people are right. Uh, <laughs> see, because I honestly don't understand how it could have cost a hundred dollars for her to get her hair done. Oh, what the hell did they do to her hair that cost a hundred of my dollars? I mean, what, did they use some kind of special horse hair to make that weave? Uh, maybe some rare stuff from a unicorn? Uh, did I pay the special white boy hypnotized by the booty price? Uh, I mean, if I'm gonna pay $100, she better come back in that salon with her hair tasting like chicken. Yeah. Cause at that price, I don't know what I'm gonna eat next week. And in the end, I did pay the $100. Cause I was in fact hypnotized by the booty. And it, and it marked a huge lifestyle change for me. Before, before I met this girl, it was all about the breasts. And then, then I changed, converted to the backside. And it's a big deal. I'm still, still kind of getting over it, so I kind of want to take a quick survey here in Atlanta, see how you guys feel about that. So guys, uh, if, you, if you prefer breasts, if you see yourself to be a breast man, make some noise right now. Breast man, make some noise. It's OK. That's all right. Represent. You're few, but you're proud. I know it's out of style right now, but so are light skinned brothers, and you still see me up here. So don't, 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 don't trip. All right, all right. Who, who's, who likes that? Who's an ass man? Make some noise. And, and then I guess I've heard about you guys here in Atlanta. I guess the rest of you would be penis men, and that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, this, this, these next few minutes aren't for you, but that's cool. That's cool. Uh, I, I personally, I, I think. I think ass is, is far, far superior. See, because guys, every guy wants breasts. Give me some breasts, 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 and you get the breasts, and there's just 
not that much you can do with it. I mean, sure, you can squeeze it a little bit, get a little pinch, a little suck, you know, try and stick it in between them, but that doesn't really work. You know, push them together, or open your mouth, your girl just ends up looking retarded. You know, like this? Like this? Uh, try and grab them during sex. I'm sure she's on top. That's cool. What missionary position? What are you gonna balance on one arm? Grab the breast. After a while, your arm just starts shaking. You gotta switch arms. You know, th th my personal favorite doggy style. You know, my arms just aren't long enough. You know, unless I just want to just reach around, just bear hump or just bar, 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 bar. See, 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 but, but ass, ass is like breasts, right? Two of them, soft, round, no nipples, but still very similar. You, you, you could grab an ass, you could pinch an ass, and if the moment's right, you can even slap an ass. Just pop, just pop right side of the ass. You can't do that with some breasts. Just pop, pop, third pop right back in your face. It's unacceptable. And you want a girl with bigger breasts, well, what does she do? she got to pay thousands of dollars, have her body all cut up, put some plastic up inside her. That is ridiculous. You want a girl with a bigger ass, you just start feeding her and feeding her, and it keeps getting bigger and better. And I love that. I, I, I love it. And, and even the, the hips get bigger, too. That's all right. But that's just some extra ass on the side, just some side ass. You know what I'm talking about? I just love it. I can't get enough, but I, I notice sometimes things go awry. Like I said, it's just the back ass and the side ass. You get some kind of weird front ass. You know what I'm talking about? Some kind of strange cooch fat. Like, it, instead of a camel toe, she got a camel hump. Don't get me wrong, ladies. Meet me after the show. I will ride your hump. We can play Arabian Nights. That's how I do. My name is Louis Katz. Thank you guys very much. Good night. What's up, y'all? All right, we got to keep the show moving right here. So I'm going to bring this next comedian to the stage. He's all the way from the D, Detroit. Show some love for Spanky Hayes. Let him in. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, ATL makes noise. What's up with it? Good to be here, y'all. How many people in here are... It's black, first of all, make some noise if you're black. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Now, uh, clap your hands if you are broke. Come on, God know, God know, come on. Being broke is amazing, ain't it? You ever been so broke that you don't even believe it yourself? You dig in the same pocket like three times, like, ain't this so, I just had three dollars. Fellas, you ever been so broke that you seen your woman in the car with another man, but it didn't matter because you want to borrow $5 from her? <laughs> you don't even look at her. Let me get that five for real. I need that. This is ludicrous. He used big words when he broke. This is preposterous. This is Atlanta, home of the thick girls. I love big girls, thick girls, fat girls. I love all y'all. You're beautiful. Ain't you? Skinny girls ain't nothing. The fat girl, they cook all type of day. It don't matter what time it is. As long as you hungry, she gonna get up. It could be four in the morning. And I'm hungry. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Every hour on the stove on, she climbing, screaming, everything. She's in the oven, everything. Thanksgiving, she don't even let you get up. <gasps> Lay down and eat it. <sighs> you don't got to get up. <sighs> That's what I do. That's why you got 15 necks. I like fat girls. If you're going to be a fat girl, be a real fat girl. I know this girl in Detroit, she ain't playing. She got a tattoo of some cheese at the corner of her mouth. We call her Nacho now. She bought it. I ain't bought it. I love big girls. There's something about y'all. Y'all can't get, like, a whole bunch of sexual gifts. You can't buy them that. I bought my fat girl some snicker panties, y'all. By the time I got back over there, I dropped them off. By the time I got back over there, she ate all the nougat out the pack. <laughs> so that was for me. <laughs> Damn. Just spoiling everything. I like white girls, though. White girls, I love y'all. Hey, you were American. White girls do stuff black girls don't do, though, for real. White girls suck your dick and buy you an Xbox the same day. You be at the mall looking like, I love you. 
Jesus. Are you black? You got a white girlfriend? You be walking in the mall with your white girlfriend and shit? Black girls be looking at you all crazy. I be like, whatever. I got eight bags in my hand. Come on, Amber. Just get close to me. Don't worry. They won't harm you. Oh, let's go to Foot Locker. We're going to Foot Locker now, black girls. Foot Locker. Yes, can I have some Jordans, please? Fat girls buy you stuff, too, but you don't hang out with them. Hey, let me get some Jordans, but I'll be over here looking at some other stuff. This is some book. Okay. Let nobody know I'm with you. I just smoked some weed. I love smoking weed. Anybody? Weed heads? Weed is good. Clap your hands if you don't smoke weed. All right. You are losers. You are, man, you wasting your life. Weed is the only thing that makes you get up five in the morning and fix a, a fried bologna sandwich with eggs and tomatoes. You say, oh, shit. That's some real stuff. You can do any kind of drug, just don't do cocaine. You know, that's the Bobby Brown. You have your mouth like, looking like Bobby Brown. <laughs> and I know you. Hey, that nigga was so high, he was dancing sideways. Straighten your mouth out. <laughs> Bobby Christina. <laughs> Where your mom at? <laughs> when did Houston come out just like that? Like, oh, oh, right here. I believe I can fly. <laughs> that was two crackheads, for real. <laughs> Since I've been here, I've been noticing there's a lot of lesbians. I'm one also. <laughs> Don't feel bad about that. But some of y'all are too tough looking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Miss nigga, she walking around hard. <laughs> what's up, homie? What's up, homie? Why you hollering at my girl? Homie, what's up with that, homie? Hey, 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 homie. If you're that hard, you got to fight for your girl. How about that? <laughs> Y'all be cutting your hair too low? I seen a girl, her hair was so short. I swear to God, don't do that, girls. All y'all don't look good. Some of y'all look like DMX from across the street. I went up to this girl and said, you know, he look like she said, that's not me. Everybody say that, though. Maybe I should change my style, put on some MAC lipstick or something like that. I don't know. Take your choice away from me. <laughs> Ladies, y'all need to go down on me more. Just go down, please. Just a little bit more. Girls who don't go down don't get good Christmas gifts. How about that? Is that a good, you know? For real. Women only go down on you when they want something now. Am I lying, fellas? Am I lying? This girl was going down on me and gonna stop and say, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, I want a Rockefeller outfit. I said, well, you should have been sucking Jay-Z dick, because... This is a $5 dick right here, you know what I'm saying? You can get you some 99 cent Doritos. You can get cheese or uh, the blue kind, either one, but I asked you for $5 yesterday. That's why we, we ain't communicate. But if you're gonna do it, ladies, please do it. One time this girl did it to me so good, I gotta tell y'all about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here. It was so beautiful. She had like a, like a nine volt battery in her neck. She was doing it going, she was spitting on this. When she got done, I didn't even have a dick no more. I had a smoothie. I'm out of here, y'all. Thank you, hey, for Detroit, baby.
what happened. He went the wrong way and then fell down the steps. Let's keep it hype, y'all. Let's love, man. Let's keep some energy going. This next guy, the Chicago native, one of my homeboys, y'all. Y'all show some love and get hype for Mr. Tony Schofield. Let him in, y'all. What up, Atlanta? How y'all feel, baby? Yeah. I feel good, y'all. I feel real good. But I got a few issues, man. First of all, I think we got too much technology. Don't y'all agree? Yeah. We just got too much technology now. We got so much computer sense, we ain't even got common sense no more. <laughs> Machines doing all the thinking for us, man. I'm on the phone with my homie the other day. We on the phone. This fool tell me, dog, I got something to tell you. I'm about to send you an email. <laughs> I'm like, ain't we on the phone? I gotta hang up the phone, go in there, log on to the internet to find out what you could have just told me right here. It's too much, man. And you just can't have a regular cell phone no more. You gotta have what? Camera phone. Where all my camera phone people at? All the stalkers clap. Where y'all at? Because I feel unless you on an undercover operation for the CIA, ain't no reason for you to hide no camera on your phone. And they got this little cute feature that when they see you, they take your picture. So when you call them, your picture pop up on their phone. So they can know who called. Ain't that cute? I block all my pictures. I call your phone, my picture be like this, anonymous. I ain't lying, man. Then you can't have a regular phone ringer no more. You got to have some hip hop on your phone. You got to have your favorite record ringing on your phone. And that's cool if you hanging out in grown folks' spots. But you can't be going to pick the babies up at daycare with Dave Banner talking about, run, girl. <laughs> Ringing on your phone, man. You can't do it. I was in church last Sunday. In church. Reverend in the middle of a fiery sermon. Fiery. Right in the middle of his sermon. Somebody phone ringer went off 50 cent magic stick right in the middle of the sermon. I ain't lying, y'all should have seen the reverend. He was like, I... Oh, we gonna take a short break while the choir does a number. Choir came out talking about, we got the magic stick. Serious, man. Too much technology, you can't have regular TV no more. You got to have what? Plasma TV. See, and I got ball of friends who gassed me up and told me to go get plasma for the whole house. I'm like, I'm going out and get plasma for every room. I went in the plasma joint. Plasma TV, $6,000. I'm like, man, that's a Hyundai. I can get me a damn Sonata for $6,000. $6,000 for the TV? It better be some special TV watching jumping off if I pay $6,000 for the TV. I ain't lying, if I'm watching cops and they having a shootout, somebody in my damn living room gotta get grazed, I ain't lying. I better be able to jump in the damn TV and help them catch the criminal. He is over here! I'm serious, man, 8,000 for the TV? If I'm watching an NBA game, the, the ball better come in my living room about three, four times. I'd maybe sitting there like, Shaq, y'all better quit playing and y'all gonna break something in here. <laughs> but my wife had to come in and make sense out of the whole plasma TV argument. She like, yeah, fool, you gotta play thousands of dollars for a TV. Go ahead. But if you don't pay that $49 cable bill, <laughs> you ain't really got nothing but a real nice picture frame. That's all you got. Serious, man. A lot of things going on. We got a lot of couples in the house. Couples, where y'all at? Make some noise if you bought your lady with you, fellas. That's the right thing to do right there, bro. I'm going to tell you something. I love ladies, especially if you've been with your woman for a long time. You got to be adventurous, bro. You got to keep the home fires burning. And ladies, y'all cool because y'all try to help us out all the time and give us little hints and stuff that y'all have read in the magazine. And it's cool, but y'all be at work reading the magazine and you don't get all the instructions right and come home and tell us something. All right, I'm going to just tell y'all what happened. 
My lady was reading in essence that a good hot oil rub down when you getting ready to throw down supposed to be the bottom. So she come in, we getting ready to throw down. She tell me go in there and put a little dish of baby oil in the microwave. <laughs> Don't say how long, <laughs> what temperature. Shit, I put it in there on popcorn. <laughs> like popcorn, that's about right. I should have known someone I had to take it out with the potholder. I came running down the hall in my drawers and socks with a hot bowl of oil. I'm like, baby! Oh, she came. That close to not making it. I ain't lying. Doctor said she got about four more skin grafts to undergo. Just wish I could get that burnt chicken smell out my house. <laughs> it's serious, man. And y'all give me a round of applause, man. I just reached a major milestone. I stopped smoking weed, y'all. Finally. Yeah, man, I had to stop, because I was smoking outside, and they called my ass and told me it's time to come on stage. I'm like, I'm gonna have to quit. But ain't nothing wrong with smoking weed. It's a cool drug. It's them other drugs we gotta get rid of. Heroin, get rid of heroin. Heroin is the stupidest drug ever came out. Heroin will make you go to sleep right in the middle of your conversation. You will sleep for about eight minutes and wake up and finish what you was talking about. I ain't lying, I got a cousin on heroin. The other day we sitting up, he like, dog, I was watching the NBA the other day, man. I'm gonna tell you something, I was watching Miami Heat. Shaq had about 16 points, 18 rebounds. He tried to tell me the whole game. I'm like, I ain't got four hours. I ain't lying, man, but weed is cool. Weed is a cool drug. You just got to be careful because it'll take away your short-term memory. It's your short-term memory that's messed up. Like, say you gave me your phone number tonight. Tomorrow, I ain't going to remember. February? I'm going to remember it because then it's going to be in the long-term memory. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to tell y'all, man, last week made me realize I got to quit smoking weed. I was so high, I went to McDonald's, ordered my food at the big boy, paid at window one. <laughs> I drove to the crib. I forgot all about window two. <laughs> Dude in window two with my food, like, what? I came back about 10 minutes later, he was like, don't even explain it, dawg, you ain't got nothing to hide. I put two extra apple pies in the bag. My beeper number on your napkin. Hey, y'all, that's all my time. I'm Cody Schofield. Peace out, God bless you, Atlanta. Shot Town, represent. Tony Schofield, let him in, y'all. All right, we got to keep the show moving right here. So I'm going to bring this next comedian to the stage. Now, I had the pleasure of going over to Afghanistan and performing with this brother for the troops. We did our thing over there with Jay Leno. He brought us because he needed a Mexican and a black dude, and he hooked us up. Now, he, he, he's a former security guard, a plumber, and a roofer, and he finally found his calling, making people laugh. Y'all show some love for this dude right here, my man, Willie Barcena. Let him in, y'all. Yeah. Give it up for Cedric. Put your hands together for Cedric. Listen, man, let me, let me ask you guys something. Right now, it's getting ridiculous with all this therapy and counseling. Everybody, Dr. Phil and Oprah, it's just getting ridiculous, all right? Like one of my nephews stutters. They want to put him in speech therapy, all right? When I was growing up and somebody in the neighborhood stuttered, you just made fun of him, all right? <laughs> that kid went home and practiced. <laughs> all right? 
I mean, we don't tell anybody the truth. That's what's wrong. You know, if somebody's a heavy, you don't, you can't even tell them, hey, stop eating, fat ass. You know, it's, oh, they're overweight. No, they're fat. You know, that's how you help somebody that's fat. You got to go, hey, stop eating. All right? No, it's a disease now if you're overweight. It's not your fault that you eat like an animal. It's a disease. No, it's not a disease. It's a choice. You saw a cake, you ate it. All right? All right? It's not a disease. It's not like you bump into another fat person and go, oh, no, I cut the fatties. You know? They had an 800-pound chick on Oprah. Her and Dr. Phil were trying to figure out how she got to be 800 pounds, right? I was like, I'll take a wild guess. How does any human being get to be 800 pounds? You know, like, how do you make that your limit? You know, how do you wake up one day and go, damn, I let myself go? I remember when I was 650, I was so cute. You know, and another thing, all right? If you get that big, you know what they do to these people that get like 800 pounds? They get handicapped parking, all right? You, you can't eat like that and get a prize. This is what's wrong, man. Everything is, woe is me, feel sorry for me, crap, all right? Think of me as Dr. Phil from the hood, all right? Anybody here depressed, if you're lonely, kill yourself, all right? All right, I was watching, check this out. I was watching uh, ESPN. They had a guy he, there, he was a wrestler. This kid was from the Midwest, his name's Kyle Maynard. Had no arms and no legs. This kid didn't feel sorry for himself. He wasn't like, oh, woe is me. He was a wrestler. No arms and no legs, wrestler. Every day he got up and said, hey, let's wrestle. Well, he didn't go like that, but you know what I'm saying, right? Check this out. You know what I thought was really cool? They showed matches of this kid wrestling, you know? And he was winning. And I was watching and going, man, that's, that's very inspiring. Look at that. This guy got no arms and no legs. And he wins all these dudes, man. But then I thought about all the kids that lose to him. <laughs> Could you imagine that drive home with their dads? <laughs> Son, the kid had no arms and no legs, man. I mean, what more advantage did you need? I mean, what's the kid gonna say, right? Hey, Dad, did you see his chin? Well, you know. <laughs> and right, and this kid's real cool. He's a, he's a motivational speaker, right? They take him around the country, they prop him up, you know? <laughs> they tell, you know, he tells people, hey, you can do it. Hey, if that was me, prop me up at the bar. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, man, bartender! Bartender! Everything, I'm telling you, everything, you can't feel sorry for sorry. You just got to move on. But you know what? My wife is always like, my wife says, like, Willie, you got to be more sensitive. You got to understand people. <laughs> All right? <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Ladies, if you have a man by your side that understands you and he cries with you and he likes to do the things you like to do, he's gay. All right? All right? He's gay. That's just it right there. Hey, look, and hey, I don't care if you're gay or gay. You know, I, I'm not anti-gay. Hey, suck on, you know, whatever. You know? But my, my wife, she always wants to talk. Men, we don't talk. Women love to talk, man. You know, have you ever walked, in, you ever walked into a diner and seen a little old couple that's been married forever? Like a little 80-year-old couple, right? You look at the little old lady and she's still talking. Right, you look at the little old man, he's just down to blinking. <laughs> and that's Morse code for someone, please shoot me. <laughs> Stab me. W women love to talk. You ever seen women talk to each other? They don't even listen, man. They're just waiting for the turn, you know? Yeah. It's like double dutch, they're just trying to get in. You know, I think that's why men grow hair in their ears, you know? You know, those are nature's earplugs. 
Let me explain. I'll give you an example, right? Let's say you get a flat. Let's say I got a flat. I come home from work and my wife asks me, like, what happened? I tell her, hey, I got a flat. You know, that's the whole story. <laughs> it had a beginning, middle, and end. <laughs> right? If, if women, like, same scenario. Let's say your lady got a flat on the way home. You ask her, hey, baby, what happened? Okay. You're never gonna believe this one, okay? Around 3.30, no, 3.37, I was looking at my watch, okay? I was on my way to the mall, I was gonna buy some shampoo, the big blue bottles, they didn't have the big blue bottles. I got your total green ones, they were on sale, okay? I couldn't find any park, and I parked like two blocks away, and my feet were hurting, because I had no new shoes with the buckles, not the one with the laces, right? All right, 10 minutes later, you're all dizzy, right? And then you go, you're not even listening, you wake up, yes, I am. All right, and then we get the test, what'd I say? And you know you weren't listening, right? So you, now you gotta make up a story from the words that came in. <laughs> like, yeah, I know you, you got some flat shampoo, what happened? <laughs> All right, now here's where it gets weird, man, right? You don't wanna, this is how they punish us, because women get mad when you don't wanna listen to that long ass story, right? So this is how they punish us. They don't tell us the story, all right? You get the silent treatment. Now here's where it really gets weird. It bothers us, right? They don't want to tell you a story that you didn't want to hear, right? Now you're walking around the room chasing her, like asking her, hey, come on, tell me. <laughs> what happened, what happened? You got some shampoo, then what happened? <laughs> you know what it is? Because women always want that perfect guy, the guy from the movies. Ladies, he doesn't exist. All right, you ladies go to the movies, you see Brad Pitt, Danzel, you know, come home, look at us. Man, look at this crap. <laughs> and you love these guys from the movies. You know why you love them, ladies? Because these guys, whenever they're making love, they always say just the right things. You know why? Because someone wrote it from them. <laughs> All right, because we're just, really, we're just regular guys. When we make love, we say normal stuff. Hey, stay down, car's coming. <laughs> hey, guys, my name is Willie Parcel. Thank you very much. Again, you've been a fantastic audience. We appreciate y'all coming out, supporting the Lab of Palooza, America's premier urban comedy arts festival. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. No, we appreciate y'all. We hope y'all had a good time tonight. We thank you for the love. Give yourself and all these comics that was on the stage tonight a round of applause. I've been your host, Cedric Dinner Tater. I holler.